Thank you so very much for joining us this day for worship here at Starkville First United Methodist Church. We have an exciting time of worship in store for you this day. Uh, we look forward to drawing you in through the camera, into this worship service. And I pray that whatever we say or do here today will not only glorify God, but also will touch you and your family in a very special and powerful way. Thank you again for joining us for worship. Let's go now.
Jesus. Oh Lord, we cast down our idols. And give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, oh God. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Thank you so very much for joining us this day for worship here at Starkful First United Methodist Church. We have an exciting time of worship in store for you this day. Uh, we look forward to drawing you in through the camera, into this worship service. And I pray that whatever we say or do here today will not only glorify God, but also will touch you and your family in a very special and powerful way. Thank you again for joining us for worship. Let's go now.
our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is your God this morning? Is he a big God? He is a great God. Let's pray to that God right now. Heavenly Father, we are here to praise your name, Father. We know that you are the great and powerful God, and we thank you for the love you showed us through your Son, our Christ Jesus. We pray now, Father, that our lives may bring glory to you. All that we do, all the people that we meet might see you through us, Father. Fill us to overflowing with your love in this hour. Father, you are a great God, and we love you and can't say thank you enough, but we try our best. Amen. may be seated. Thank you so much, band, for the wonderful music. Thank you for again for sharing your great gifts with us. Let us pray. God, we do op- we ask that you help us to open our hearts at this moment to the things that you've already begun to say to us. There's no doubt your spirit is already and freely moving in our lives, and you're already speaking. But dear God, one more time, 
we just ask that you help us to clear away all the clutter in our minds and in our hearts and just clear away all those obstacles that stand in our way of hearing from you this day. So God, the music has already begun to, begun to pull away the layers. Those layers and those walls that we build throughout the week and throughout the days and throughout the years. Those walls that keep us from being who you have called us to be. So dear God, again, we ask that you just clear it all away so we can hear your word and your message to us. And dear God, even and even possibly be transformed by it. Thank you, dear God, for being present with us right now. In your name we pray. Amen. Our text today comes from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 and 40, 40 through 42. Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Jesus has just been talking to his disciples about uh, the importance of going out. He's sending them forth, he's sending them out into the world, and he's talking to them about uh, the difficulties they'll have and the persecutions they'll face. He's, and he's sent, but he's talking about the importance of the message they have. But then at the very end of chapter 10, he comes to a point where he says, but then there will be those who will invite you in. There will be those who will throw out the welcome mat, those who will allow you to come in, even as strangers, and be a part of their family. So Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42 says this, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Church, this is the word of God for the people of God. This morning... This morning, I want to ask you a very, very deep theological question. Now, if you don't understand what theological is, that's the study of God, basically. So this morning, I want to begin with a very deep, deep theological question. You know, one of those questions that, well, I spent three years in seminary discovering the answer to. You know, one of those questions that keep you awake at night trying to your hardest with the work of the holy spirit ministering to you and speaking to you trying your best to find the answer to the question you know one of those that just make you dig deep into those those hidden crevices of your heart to seek out the answer well the question is this why do we have front porch light Yeah, I told you, deep, deep theological stuff right there. Why do we have lights on our front porch? Well, you think about this. Think about this for a second. Think about the importance of your front porch light. Now, I don't know about you, but it just drives me crazy when I don't turn my front porch light on before we leave for the evening. And I come back to a dark house, and I have to fumble through my keys trying to find the one that fits the lock on the door, you get your cell phone out, and you try to shine on your keys, and it, it, it just creates all kind of problems for me getting into the house. So yeah, that front porch light kind of shines the light, illumines the lock which enters, that helps you get into the door. Well, you think about it, the front porch light being on sends a signal. Now this is, why, this is where we begin with these front porch lights. When people, back in the old days, when people traveled, they didn't have these nice new cars. They, they traveled on feet. And they traveled in carriages and wagons and well, however they could get around. And the front porch light being turned on was a symbol that those who were traveling 
in the midst of darkness could find a place where they knew they could be invited in to find rest. That's, what the, that's where the front porch lights originated. So see, when and you're in your home and you, uh, you turn that front porch light on, it's a sign to all the world that you're inside. Welcome, come on in. Unless it's Halloween. And that's when me and my wife, we turn off all our lights and hide behind the couches. Because we don't trick or treat. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. See, the, the front porch light, though, it, it's, it's, it's important. It's important. It, it gives off warmth. It illumines the front door which, enters, which leads into someone's home. One of my favorite commercials on TV, or all-time favorite commercials on TV, is the commercial for Motel 6. Motel 6. You know, there's a true, this is a true story. The owner of Motel 6 was driving around one day, and he was really struggling. The, the motel chain was really struggling. It was, he was trying to get it going, get it, up, get it off his feet, and, and, and establish itself in, in a world full of hotel chains and motel chains. And So he was really trying to find some way, some advertising scheme that could, would draw people to his hotel. And what he says, and I was reading his biography, as, as he dro drove along, there was this real, real... Well, he says, yokel, for lack of a better word, voice, that came over the radio, and he said to himself, that's my voice. That's my voice. That's who will speak for Motel 6. And well, of course, if you don't know by now, it's Tom Bodette. Tom Bodette of Motel 6. And so he said, well, I've got my voice, but now I've got to figure out some type of marketing scheme that will draw people to our motels. And so he and Tom Bodette sat down, and of course they came up with the catchphrase, we'll leave the light on for you. We'll leave the light on for you. It's a catchphrase that reminds all who are traveling down the highways and byways, as Tom Bodette would say, as you're headed to Grandma's house for Christmas, and you're tired and weary, Stop into one of our hotels, Motel 6, because the light is always on. And every time I hear that, I'm reminded of the importance of the front porch light. And why do you think that Tom Bodette and Motel 6 chose that as their catchphrase? Well, because they understand the importance of the front porch light. It sends a signal to all those who are traveling by that we're at home and you're invited in. I wonder if that's true for all of our homes. I wonder if we really realize what we're doing by turning that front porch light on. I dare say there'll be some of you who'll go home tonight and you'll tell your spouse, don't turn that light on. Because now you've discovered this is what it means. Well, in our text today, Jesus is certainly not talking about front porch lights, but he is talking about the importance of being welcoming and the importance of hospitality. And again, this conversation comes after all he's talked to his disciples about, about sending them out and about the responsibility to go and share the good news of Jesus Christ having come and and, and, and what he's done for us. And, and, and he's telling his disciples, there'll be some people, there'll be some places you'll go where, well, as other uh, scriptures remind us, there'll be some places you go that you'll go in and you won't be welcome at all. But then he said, just shake the dust off your feet and keep on moving. Because I assure you, Jesus says, that there are places, there are persons, there are churches in this world who want you there with them. But then Jesus goes on and he says, and to those of you who will turn your front porch light on, those of you who will be a place where strangers can stop in and find rest and comfort and peace, for those of you who do that, well, there's great reward. 
There's great rewards for you if you're willing to do that. He said one reward is that you'll, know, you'll, you'll be known as a place where people can be well welcomed. You'll be known as a place where people can come and feel welcomed. Think about that for a second. Are we known for a place where people can come and feel welcome? Are our homes places where people come and feel welcomed? Is there a warmth that shines from our homes and our churches and in our individual lives where people feel welcome? You know, Jesus said there are great rewards. There are great rewards for those people. And the reward is people will say this about you. Oh, I love going to their home because I always feel so welcome. Oh, I love going to that church because they're so warm and they're so inviting, they're so welcoming, and it, 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 just, it just feels like home. See, that's the front porch light effect. That's why Tom Bodette says at the end of every Motel 6 advertisement, and remember, we'll leave the light on for you. I wonder, I wonder if people see us as being warm and welcoming. Well, I think finally, not finally, maybe the most important reward of receiving a stranger and being a welcoming place for a stranger and being hospitable to those who are traveling through this thing called life is that, well, the reward may be we are entertaining Christ himself. Have you ever thought about that? Even Jesus said in this text, he says, even those who are willing to just give a cup of cold water is doing it, well, he's doing it, just, they're doing it to me. I wonder how many times Christ has come and there has been no light on the porch. I wonder how many times Christ has, in, has visited us and we've not received him with a warm welcome. I wonder how many times he's visited our church and he's not felt at home. I wonder. I wonder. You think about that. Jesus said there are great rewards for those places that are inviting and hospitable. I think one of the, one of the most amazing times that I have ever really under... Well, one of the most amazing times in, that in my life where I really, for the first time, began to understand what hospitality to a stranger was about. And, and of course, Dave is here and some other folks are. When we went to Russia a couple of years ago, we spent a couple of weeks in, in uh, Cizron, Russia, and Moscow, Russia, and St. Petersburg. But I think one of, the, one of the, most, the things that struck me most about these people who made on average $300 a month, was that when we visited their homes or their churches, they went all out for us. Ask Dave. Dave will tell you. When we visited their homes, they had their finest china laid out for us. They had a variety of foods that they probably, well, I guess they didn't, they didn't have on a regular night. I mean, they really rolled out the red carpet for us. And I thought to myself many times, they don't even know us. Why would they do this? And then the more sad thing about it is, is that they would do it for us, but yet we won't even do it very rarely for people who we do know. But they would invite us in, and, and, 
as I thought about this this particular week, and I thought about the way they received us into their homes and the way they treated us like kings and queens, and, 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 and they just gave us the best of everything they had, I began to think about that question. Why? Why would they do that? And as much as I would like to think it's because we were such a fine group of people from such a fine church and such a fine town and from the world's best university, as much as I would like to think it was all that, well, I've come to the conclusion that it probably wasn't. It probably, that probably wasn't the reason why. No, we received this warm welcome because of who we represented. They knew we were on a mission trip. They knew we were from a church, and so they welcomed us not because of who we were, but because of who we represented in Christ Jesus. They got it. They understood that these people are here representing Christ to us. That's what Jesus is saying in our text today. That's exactly what he's saying. He's saying these people who welcome you, these disciples, into their homes, into their places of worship and into their businesses, they're, they're welcoming you because they know you represent me. Everywhere we went in Russia, there was always a light burning. And most of them lived in apartments. And they didn't have front porch lights with an, with an outside warmth and glow that drew us to their homes. No, their light burned brighter than any bulb that you could ever imagine. The light that they shined was the light of Christ. They recognized who we represented. I wonder, are our lights burning? Are our lights burning brightly? those lights which shine from our souls out into the world, do they, do they send the, the message that we are ready to receive, we're ready to welcome, that those strangers who come into our midst, those people that we don't know, maybe not have uh, ever met before, are we always ready to receive them because, well, they may come representing Christ. Well, Tom Bodette in Motel 6, I don't know if they would be where they are today without that catchphrase. I don't know if they would be this worldwide chain that they have without that catchphrase. But I know on that day when the owner was driving around town wondering if, this was ever going to make it. I know as he drove, that voice, that voice he heard, immediately, immediately, he said, this is the voice that's going to open the doors to the world. I wonder, are our lights burning? Can that be said of us? Welcome, any time, day or night. Our lights are always on, ready to receive that stranger which is traveling down the road. You know, I don't know why this is, but we have yet to figure out that it's just as easy to be inviting than it is to turn people away. It's just as easy to be warm and welcoming than it is to be standoffish and cold. It's just as easy. But not only is it just as easy, it's what Christ asked us to do. It's what Christ ask us to do well I know what's going to happen when I get home today 
I know exactly what's going to happen. My wife's going to say to me, we're going to clean the house up now. Because we, I now know that whoever hears what you've just said knows, well, they can come to our house anytime they want to. I'm going to go out and unscrew the light bulb. <laughs> no. I hope our lights are always burning, always open to receive the stranger, because you never know. It may be Christ himself. The bad news about this day is that, well, this will be the last contemporary worship service until August 10th, second Sunday in August. But I'll leave you with this thought. Don't worry. Don't fear. Because when August 10th rolls around, well, our lights will be burning. Let's pray. God, thank you for this morning, and thank you for the opportunity just to share with each other some thoughts and some ideas that you have placed upon our hearts. And dear God, help us to always be ready to receive the stranger. Help us to always be ready to give that cup of cold water. Dear God, help us to always be warm and welcoming, just as you are for us. God, help us to always be looking for someone to share the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, with. And may people always find a welcoming hospitable place here in our church. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for being such an inviting, warm beacon of light, shining for all to see. And may we emulate that in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning as we, as the band plays, the altars are open for you to come and Pray as the Holy Spirit leads you. This just be at a time of prayer. And maybe there's something that you need to pray about this morning. Maybe you want me to pray with you. I'll be glad to do that. Maybe you'd like to join this church or to become a Christian for the first time. Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Again, I, I would love to, to, to pray with you about that. I just ask that you be open to the move of the Holy Spirit this time as the band plays.
up your voices with us Yeah. 
voices with the sea. Amen. Give them a hand. <laughs> Thank you for being here this morning. And don't forget, take, a, take your bulletin with you. Look through it. Uh, several things going on in the life of our church, even during the summer. Um, I just want to just remind you of one thing. Uh, it's, I guess it's the preacher in me that, wants to, that feels the need to say this. Uh, we, we often travel and take vacations during the month of June and July and sometimes in August. But your church is still very active and still going strong. And uh, we have many programs that are still uh, happening, the kids and the youth. Uh, uh, we, and I say all to say, don't, don't forget about us uh, when you're writing your checks out uh, <laughs> throughout, throughout the, the summer months because we, we, still, we still need uh, to, to, to pay for all the great ministry that goes on here during the summer. Also, your, pres your presence here. Uh, again, there's so many great and wonderful things going on. If you look through, there's the opportunity for the kids to go to the Braves game. Um, I don't see anybody that might fit into this category, but uh, Monday we're having the senior adults here for our game day. Again, uh, <laughs> well, I was trying to be nice, Skip. <laughs> but yeah, we, there's so many great things going on uh, in the life of this church. But we just thank you so much for doing what you do uh, for it. Yes, Richard. Mm -hmm. And the church told the other church told me to give me a wife because I'm a builder. If it's the word of God, I got to walk up right. So I want to thank Jacob for <laughs> the word that telling me to be right by the Lord. So I want God to give me a hand. I'm gonna get married. I'm gonna have me a church going to wife. Alright, so you go you finish get married. Well congratulations, Richard. <laughs> Well, we hope you pass that blood test. <laughs> well, go forth from this place and let your light so shine that strangers, people traveling, and Jesus Christ himself knows that there's someone home and a place where he can come and find residence. Amen.